larger. Yeah. This is, I think it's in the first book. Uh, no, it's in this book somewhere. Check out this cool show. So we got to the National Gallery and this building is pretty magnificent. It's a little overwhelming when you first come in. And, um, oh, so we asked where the Sargent Show is and we're just walking towards it. And it's amazing that these museums are free. So there's the Sargent poster. It kind of gives you like, little bit of goosebumps to walk into buildings like this. You realize the history and... Oh, I have one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're just going to the Sargent Show. Okay. Thank you so much. It's also amazing too when you walk into the museum and all you see are smiling faces and people helping you. So I don't know. I feel emotional today, I guess being here taking an uber driver and it took just like 14 minutes to get 10 i don't even know 12 14 minutes to get here okay so just thought i'd show you a little bit of what it looks like to kind of walk down these halls and i love the fact that so it's a saturday morning right and it just is not overwhelming look at look at how open this is I was actually expecting it to be much more um, crowded. It's always a little nervous to go to a museum, especially on a weekend. But oh, look at these paintings. So we'll see some of those later. I'm going to see the sergeant first. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind of giddy. It's exciting. Oh, I see it. There it is. Way at the very end. Wow. I mean, I'm sure I've Oh, I'll go through the middle. Sure, I've been here before, but it's been a while. Oh, okay. There's one of the entrances over there, Sergeant in Spain. <laughs> this is great. Isn't it? I know. So, oh, I guess we're going this way. Okay. This must be the entrance. So this show is up till January 2nd, in case anybody wants to come see it. Oh, so these show you the years that he was in all the different cities. So he started in 1879 and the last time was 1912. Oh, very cool. Of course, it's going to be hard to photograph these because of the spotlights. Huh. And they're behind glass so that you they're protected. seen this one before. I never have. You know what's so interesting too is that I mean how simple the clothes are and that's the one thing about Sargent is that they're so thin. Oh well, you can't even see I guess the glass is kind of creating the glass is creating like a um you know like a glare. It's very difficult to, to photograph these. I'm sorry you're just gonna have to come see it yourself. Oh, so this is a, um, yeah, okay, you know, and it's interesting, I've been talking to a lot of people recently about doing master copies, and, you know, 
So yeah, Sargent did it, but the best thing to do is always say it is a copy. Well, they didn't have art books either, so this is a way to remember the painting. Yeah, to study it. That's right, they didn't have art books. And they weren't able to like see art paintings whenever they wanted to. Yeah, I've seen this one before. Oh, the copy yeah, I've seen the copy before. Oh, so this is normally at the museum, of, some art museum in Los Angeles. It's so fascinating. I like this painting. Oh my God, look at that dog. So this is interesting because it says Venetian interior and I thought maybe these are just all the paintings that they have of Sargent or something because this is supposed I think to we be were talking about the fact that he's you see the Velasquez in full. Uh-huh. And then he's, he's, he's adding these in. No, but aren't these all supposed to be him in Spain? Um, yeah. Because yeah, this is a well known painting and I've seen this before and this is from Italy. But well, we don't care. We're not going to complain. It talks about how this relates to it. No, oh, it does. Because we're saying it because Velasquez is Spanish. And so how this, how this is uh, showing how he um, you know, incorporated uh, the stuff he learned stuff from he, Spanish from artists. From Velasquez stuff oh, okay. into his, uh, two years later, into his Venice painting. To endow the models with a sense of mystery, yeah. their interior yeah. lives private and withheld from us. Okay, so yeah, yeah. more of a story. Oh. oh, see, here's another one. Angels in a transept study after Goya. Oh, because he, he must have copied it there. So those paintings from Goya, those um, in a, uh, a fresco in the chapel of, in Madrid. Yeah. No, this is great. This must have been one of his early ones. Yeah, no, this is a masterpiece. Mm, amazing painting. I know. Look at those little figures in the background. I know. I know, and it's like almost just like blue and brown. No, yeah, just blue and brown. Just yeah. Little. With the tiniest bit of like that red for that pink in the skirt. Yeah. And a little bit in the fan. I don't know, even that in the skirt is almost, yeah, maybe just a little bit added to burnt sienna. Yeah. It's amazing, just two, really two colors pretty much. Yeah, that's cool. So this is Manuel Garcia, and this is usually um, Rhode Island School of Design. Sargent received this commission for this formal portrait of the renowned Spanish baritone. Okay, teacher, to mark his 100th birthday. Holy cow, oh my God, that guy looked good for 100. Wow, it's hard to, you know, hard to show you because of the glare. Pretty cool though. And I remember seeing this painting before too. This is a painting he did, you know, as a study after Velasquez. And that's a, a famous one too, a Spanish woman. Yep. some pencils, some studies for like um, Alejandro. Scrapbook. Sargent filled scrapbooks of his travels with souvenirs and sketches. 
a bohemian. Interesting. This is a book of folk songs. say oh goodness maybe a 12 by 18 yeah or a 10 by 18 so you look see how he did the same pose one with her wearing a red shawl and one were wearing a yellow shawl that's really cool Here's a little watercolor. I've seen this watercolor in books before. So this is done about 2 in oil, 1 in pencil for the painting the Spanish dance wow, so these are over here too look at I mean there's definitely a thin wash it looks like a warmish wash underneath with cool or strokes over it but very, very, very thin definitely mainly just like a warm undertone warms for the shadows and slightly cools for the lights. Of course, the video is going to make it a little bit more contrasty than it is in person. But you do see how really, really thin the paint application is. Sort of a pencil study. I love how much mystery there is. Yeah. I love the little specks that look like sparks of light. I mean, it really looks like stars, but it's probably maybe um, little strings of light, maybe on a stage or outdoors. Welsh-born artist posed in a Spanish hat and cloak. Huh. Just like all of us, we like to play dress up and we have our models dress up in costumes. Look at that fun little... Just like gesture drawings. Nothing, like no real definition. Oh, and this is a famous one. So Scott and I actually just saw this in the Musée d'Orsay when we were in Paris, you know. When were we there? I think um, May. <laughs> and they hung it high in 
Crusaders Day too. It's so hard to see, especially with the glass, but. It's definitely, well, you know what's also amazing? And it could be just like the makeup on her face, but it really looks like, almost like kabuki. Like her face is very, very, very pale in comparison to you know, the other colors in the background and the dress. Yeah, I mean, it's noticeably powdered face. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh. So, 1894, Thomas Edison motion picture film. Wow, that's so fun. So this is in a private collection. So these, there's a lot of paintings that, you know, we probably would never see. They're hanging in some rich person's castle. Definitely just a brown and blue painting. Lots of movement. I know, just Scott, do you think that those white things are supposed to be stars in the sky? Or are they firecrackers? Yeah, or like, is it outside? Like maybe with those like um, hanging lights, you know? But it is interesting, right? Yeah, no, I know. And so much left to suggestion. You know, even that man dancing behind her is just a faint little mystery. It does look like it should be stars. Yep, it says, in this painting, pairs of dancers perform outdoors. Their movement lit by stars or fireworks. So obviously that is made up. Yeah. No, this is so cool. Wait, so this is on loan from the Hispanic Society of America. But I don't remember seeing this when we were there, so this must be one of those that are like in the archives or something. Huh, see it shows you how museums have so many paintings that they don't hang. watercolor so this is um, encountered this 14th century wellhead in Toledo's archaeological museum so he was going to museums and doing paintings oh that's so beautiful gosh he was good at watercolor this is a painting from Toledo we visited Toledo once but we Scott did one painting but we were only there for like a, an afternoon and I was walking around too much. I didn't paint, but it is a place you can definitely stay at and paint. So this is a famous watercolor. This is one um, done in 1912. This rendering of a fountain within a Granada hospital. Hmm. This is another one from Granada. Oh my God, that is a turkey. 
At first I didn't know if that was a dancer, but now it's a turkey in the bottom. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Look at the architecture in the upper left-hand corner. And then just like the mystery in the middle. Not showing nothing. And then all of a sudden this turkey in the foreground. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. These are paintings from the Alhambra. Just one thing to remind yourselves is that we don't have to paint everything. Zero in on a certain focal point and allow the rest to just be mysterious. The mystery is, you know, kind of what, I don't know, is so pleasing instead of doing an architectural rendering. So this is in the Summer Palace in the south of Madrid. Hmm. Wow, so nice. This is the Alhambra Garden. Yeah, I really did love visiting that place. Granada was. One of my favorites for sure. I guess these are the different like um, small photographs that were probably taken back then. They're very, very tiny, almost. She didn't even give you this thing to look at them. It's kind of funny. And of course, Sergeant was so good at architecture. Yep, I mean, I don't think anybody had ever really done watercolor like that before. You know, that the very, very, very painterly way of doing watercolor. And that, just the bright blues and the oranges. You know, which is just another, um, just another simplistic version of like brown and blue painting. Warm and cool. Space. Oh, blind musicians. Hmm. Wow. I mean, it just shows you you can paint anything. <laughs> Sierra Nevada. Panoramic landscapes like this view of the snow capped. Oh, so these are mountains just outside Granada. Well, I mean, it looks like it was painted like yesterday. The colors are so vibrant and so contemporary. I like to think about like, so this is watercolor with gouache. Like how long would this have taken, Sergeant, you know? I mean, I'm gonna say hour, hour and a half at most. Cause he sketches it out in pencil a little bit, right? And then just preparing the paints, putting down stuff. I mean, it, it, these things are quick. These are not labored. They're as fast as you can go in a way. So this, was done in 19, I mean, sorry, 1892. Hmm. It's getting a little more crowded, but oh my gosh, I'm so pleased that it is so open. I wanted to get a better look at this one. 
In this delicate study, the viewer is confronted by the direct stare of a robed figure whose sideburns and hats suggest that he may represent um, Korojumo, a Roma resident of Granada. Sargent incorporates the unpainted areas of his thin mahogany panel into the composition, contrasting them with the brilliant sunlit fabric. Oh my God, I'm describing paintings as an art. Wow, no, this is pretty amazing. I've never seen this before. Look at that. I mean, this painting is gonna, I'm gonna say is about a, um, an 11 by 13. So it's not big, but what he got in that guy's face is really a lot. And that's a watercolor. I mean, he was just a master of both. I mean, that's very rare to have somebody be good at landscape, people, still life, watercolor, charcoal, everything. Wow. Yeah. I love her hair. I love, oh, you know what I've never noticed before? Is look to the right of her head. The braid goes out to the right also. That's one of my favorite things is to create hair shapes on models that like go away from the head. I, I think in the book, I never saw that the hair went out to the right too. To creating those sort of pretzel loops. Wow. It's nothing like seeing paintings in person. And this watercolor. Oh, so this is a group of Spanish convalescent soldiers. Oh my God, this is so, colors are so bright and vibrant. I mean, I guess you think sometimes that watercolor should fade, but I think this has been protected really well, or I don't know, I don't know why it looks so good. I just do not know, but a master. Hospitals are not considered tourist destinations today. Popular guidebooks in Sargent's era extolled the art and architecture of these Renaissance edifices. Oh my gosh, how interesting. Well, you can tell that this painting was done over time, probably multiple sessions. The figures are really thought out. I can see layered paint. So this was not like an a la prima done in, you know, one day kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, he did, well, he wasn't, I mean, there's a, didn't he paint a lot of army and soldiers and, which is the first time I had ever seen that kind of stuff done. You know, having, showing you that the subject of art almost doesn't matter. It's how you portray it. Oh wow, look at him. Look at the guy up here, like, trying to pry the donkey mouth open. Oh my god, I love it. And I love the fact that the faces are just in motion, you know? Not too much detail in any face. That is something that I'm desperately, desperately trying to learn. And look at these strokes up in the upper left-hand corner. I mean, these are just sweeping palette knife strokes. I mean... Oh my gosh, it looks like there's like a little kitty down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It's amazing when... Oh, and then there's a doggy right there, too. What you see, first of all, in person, but then also when you take the time to look. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, Sargent did so many paintings like this in a way that I can't tell 
I don't think I've seen this one before, but I've seen, you know, similar ones. And if you think about it, like, how prolific was he? I mean, it's like, I always tell myself they did not have TV. What would I do if I wasn't binging TV constantly? What would my life, <laughs> what can I give the world? Um, but, oh. Uh, I'll find something to give. But look at these, they're like private collection. Like who owns this? So this is Seattle. I mean, what tech rich person owns that? Oh my gosh. And the fascinating thing is this little girl, right? I'm assuming it's a little girl holding something. We know what it is, but it is so completely abstracted. Is what we all strive for that seeing it from far away literally i'm at about three three and a half feet and this is about as close as you probably would ever get to a painting like this in general you would be 10 15 feet away and you see how everything kind of blends together oh, i'm so happy we came we heard that like there weren't that many paintings in the show but Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Driving in Spain. Travel in Sergeant's Day by ship, rail, horse, mule, carriage, or a combination was not easy or reliable. This watercolor, the artist gives the viewer the illusion of riding beside the horseman in the horse-drawn omnibus while he paints. Oh my gosh. No, that's too much. That is too much to be on a carriage and painting at the same time. So this says it's at the Museo Soroya, Madrid. It just must be a collection because I've, I've been there multiple times and never seen it. More people are coming. It's so great that a show like this can be probably one of the more popular shows. Ooh, Mallorca. You know, museums, I think they make so much money off like the Sargents and the Monets and the Degas. And then when they do acquisitions and stuff, I don't know, maybe they forget what people are completely inspired by when they buy art. There's just like no real darks. Look at that face. That is what we strive to do. Is not force ourselves to put full value into places that don't need it and it would just become too much. And this is a famous one. Sergeant depicted his sister Emily and their friend Eliza enjoying a leisurely moment at the rented villa. Wow, that is pretty stunning. Oh goodness, look at that red. Look at how the red surrounds them, like a big pillow. But it's all quite thin, you guys. They're really, the thickest paint is the, the whites. The, the, the browns, the blues, the greens, the reds are all really, really transparent. Look at that guy's face. Look at that. The colors, wow. And I love Sergeant was definitely somebody who introduced us to unusual compositions. And you see how his body is like practically half off the canvas? 
you know, I remember seeing the paintings that he did of little girls where, like, reaching off or the mother's hand coming down from the top. I mean, things that we don't question now, but such a completely different way of looking at things, you know, just pushing the boundaries, being very unconventional. Oh my God, that's so lovely. It's just exquisitely balanced. composition I'm talking about where literally they're coming up from the middle bottom. So they're the lead into the painting. And then you go zigzag to the right and those animals and then you zigzag up to the trees. It's you can see there's a lot of overpainting. So this is not, you know, alla prima. He did it in stages and really did some very thick paint, very dry, thick paint over top. You can see those broken strokes. I keep telling myself I should do some more sergeant studies, just like he did at the masters before him. Look at that, another one. Look at just a head coming up from the bottom. Wow. And this whole, there's a whole underpainting that's pink. So you guys, I don't know if you can tell, but everything underneath the stone is a pink wash on the canvas. So this is just like a abstracted wild olive tree roots. I mean, just a study in nature, you know? These are, these are studies that he did from churches. Okay. This one's beautiful, Tarragona. Lots of architectural studies. That's unusual. It's almost like she's a peacock. That's really beautiful. Wow. That is amazing. That's a photograph up there. Read what's going on here. This model is a preliminary work for the large crucifix, which is the focal point of the Re Boston Public Library thing. Okay. Oh my god, that's amazing. I mean, that is so stunning. Holy cow. sketch of a Spanish crucifix. Oh my god, hi! Look at you, you dressed up very Spanish-like. You see my necklace? It's, it's pumpkin. Okay, was this a pump? Was, did you make this? No. <laughs> you like it. Where did you buy that? I ordered it online. Amazon? Yeah. You're so funny. You have to, did you make this? No, no, but I, I uh, 
Do you commission this? Sometimes, yeah, this one I do. This one I just sort of ordered. Oh my gosh, well, you are a vision <laughs> and you, you match the show. Really? You totally do. You look like a Spanish dancer. I've Wait, been wearing... this looks like, oh, this is Snow White. It is Snow White. I've actually been wearing the giant flamenca dresses that, with the hoop skirt. And I've been well, maybe if you came and you just stood in the corner, someone would just paint you. I've been learning the twirl and I've been um, making videos for, <laughs> for movies. Cool. And, and so do you have a YouTube channel? Yes. Okay, tell people, what is your YouTube channel? It's, it's, it's just Teresa Oaxaca. I have, like, oh. I have my own handle. It's Teresa Oaxaca Art. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so what do you put up on your channel? I do surrealist movies about my paintings and Cool. Paintings. So it's, it's like behind the mind of the artist. Yeah, I'm getting into that. Oh, great. I'm well, I will watch. Uh, oh, please. No, I, I love, I, you're very creative. So I, will, I can't wait to watch your YouTube. That's one of my favorites. So how many times have you seen this show? I love the fact that it's Saturday and it's not completely packed. Yeah. You know? We don't get too packed here. It's because there's so much competition from your space. It's the stream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this museum is just such a marvel. And the fact that you can just see a show like this and like be able to actually see the paintings and not like, you know, because I'm sure you're like you, like Europe and stuff. Sometimes you're like, you're like trying to reach over somebody's head. and. You know, you're kind of feel claustrophobic, and I think this is oh, one more room. So what's this? Okay, just the last few. Oh, wow, that's very um, contemporary looking. It almost looks kind of clumpy. In a way, the colors and so I guess these are images maybe from the Boston Museum, and I'm gonna have to go visit that. I've never done that. Wow. Yeah, like Klimt, Muka, Art Nouveau. Yep. Sergeant's Triumph of Religion at the Boston Public Library. How have we never seen that? I'm so ignorant of what's going on. That is lovely. Sketch of Spanish Madonna. It's very muted, it's hard to see. Teresa, she is a vision. These are like photographs. When Sargent visited the Museo de Prado in Madrid to study and copy paintings of Velasquez. So this is what it looked like when he was visiting. We've been to the Prado. Photos of him. Oh my God, look at them, him painting. I love it. A oh, very handsome man in the foreground. Ah, oh, so fun. Oh, it's so fun to see photographs. This is a famous photograph of him staged in his studio. Wow. Ooh, look at this. I've always loved tile and I collect some Spanish tile. This is also a famous photo of him. Okay, this is great. So I hope you've enjoyed. I'm gonna go back and just look at the paintings without filming and holding my hand up. Yep, come visit, you guys. You gotta see the National Gallery. So we're just, I'm just doing a quick walkthrough because there is so much to see in this museum. 
that honestly, this video would be three hours. And this is a teaser for you to come visit the museum. Oh, there's sergeants in here too. Okay, we gotta quickly look here. So then it's fascinating that they did. Oh, I love what we're doing. That would be my preference. Thomas Wilmer doing. I always call him Wilmer doing, but I love him. Teaser, teaser, teaser. Come see the museum. Or you can pause on the video. Oh, this is John Lafarge. Oh my gosh, beautiful room. Yeah, um, I think you heard that uh, Teresa said that the museum never really gets that crowded because there's so much competition in town. Look at that beautiful landscape down there at the end. Which is why the French thing is you know, hard because people think that you're going to do it in two hours and yeah. by the end you're going to have half the show. Mm -hmm. Sergeants, you guys. A treasure trove of sergeants. Scott and I only have today, so. But we'll spend more time when we come back next May for the Portrait Society. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Wow. So what, were you, what have you been doing all week? Have you been painting? Or? Yeah, yeah, I've been painting, and I've been, I was painting all day, and I was working on video all day, and then I was out here just a few days ago with friends, as I told you, wearing the giant, like, giant dress. So you're working on your YouTube videos? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, And uh, Can't wait. It's, it's, there's going to be one where there's a mansion, and it, like, blesses people to make an art. So, true story, this one is going to be a true story. It's in a door shop. It's like it's like kind of like a music video. Teresa gave us a little tour and you know this is the modern section it's gigantic walking here I felt like I was walking through the United Terminal Airport in um, Chicago 
and I'm getting faint so I need to eat something but no it's been fun just kind of walking and talking about art and you know sharing stories but I'm, I'm gonna go to this terrace cafe and get something to eat so the National Gallery closes at 5 and it's almost 5 so we got out of there and we're walking towards the portrait museum and we came across this almost looks like it's a Christmas festival so wow look at this I mean it's the only five o'clock right should we just go to the hotel like I normally would and just sit and watch the great British baking show um how do we have to go up over here okay I have a feeling I'm gonna get some food okay Ooh, taste of Germany. Oh, it looks like they're gonna have some music. Oh, I feel like I'm being so festive. But I guess uh, Teresa said that the portrait museum is open till seven o'clock. So, and it's free again. Oh, hello. So cute, people getting their photos with the polar bear. All right, here we go, another museum. Yeah. She just looked like an Arthurian queen, like Guinevere. But it's a modern outfit. It's, it's just like what was in style back then. Wasn't she like a... We're at the portrait museum. I haven't been here in so long. I'm officially doing a marathon of museums today. Look at how thin the shadows are. Lucky, lucky. I love it when they put paintings in the doorway so you get to make sure you go in that room. Oh my god. So this is a John White Alexander. abstract that is. We think that this painting is so like over rendered. Well, no, that's a bad way of saying not over rendered, but you know what I mean. And look at how abstract that is. And how like left the bottom and the background is such a balance. I actually, a long time ago, after seeing this painting, I would say in my 20s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's pictures of me when I was very young, maybe like 21, when I found a dress just like this. Of course, it wasn't, you know, it was more probably made out of polyester, but it had this exact same sleeves and cut. I remember wearing it to an opening at the Bartlesville Talisman Gallery. And um, it was probably one of those openings that she had for all of the gallery artists. And I wore it to the opening, inspired by that. beautiful Maria Oak okay doing so the wife of Thomas Wilmer doing you know she's not well known enough oh interesting huh I 
I like the colors. I'm actually very, very interested in doing more intense colors, if that's, you know, the word. I keep telling everybody recently I'm sick of flesh. These colors are very exciting, these sort of very, very strong greens and blues, these color harmonies. Henry Asawa, Asawa Tanner. I'm, I'm sorry, I said his name wrong. I fell in love with um, Thomas when we were doing early, early on. And Scott and I were in New York one time and we saw a show at the Brooklyn Museum of Art that just blew me away. And he's always been somebody, you know, it's not so much the poses or anything, it's the color harmonies. It's the application. I've been very inspired by him, these pastels that I'm starting to do. So just the choosing of the colors. Oh, Scott, well, this painting, we were very inspired. Um, we used to have a piano similar, and it took Scott to photos of me in sort of like a, a ball gown kind of thing, and he did watercolors and paintings of me. Very similar, um, you know, pose. So we were inspired by that. Yeah, and I remember seeing just a dozen or more of real uh, doings pastels. So they're kind of similar um, application, but using colored paper and then just doing a very delicate pastel approach. And that's kind of a little bit of what I'm excited about because this painting is on a, a textured canvas, meaning it's a rougher canvas. And so the paint is kind of rubbed in. And then I see like really rubbed in paint and then a little bit of dry brush. But everything is very, very thin. This is maybe a little more finished one of his. Definitely more rendered. I love this painting. I love how just brushy and exciting it is. It probably looks more tight or whatever that words are, like because when it's blown down in a book. But this is life size, so these you see every stroke. The colors are very distinct. You know, the brushwork is very distinct. is actually quite busy. I don't know why it's more busy. Maybe just because it's open later. Yeah, another beautiful one. Just a little bit more finished. But that green, these hues of green are everything to me now. Like, I'm very excited about different hues of greens and blues and teals and purples you know more on that colder color scale yeah no, i like it and this the just utter perfection This is really bold. This flower really glows in, in far away. I'm about to crash. I'm gonna be very exhausted. And Teresa and Scott were um, walking so slow and talking that I just had to move faster. that cute little sculpture of the girl kind of skipping rollerblading I guess or roller skating I don't know how much more I can take of this I, I'm, I'm mentally it's hard for me to soak in all of this art I like, I 
love this background. This is perfect. <laughs> it's so calm. I hadn't thought of that. It's so calm, yeah. It's, it's so it's fun to have abstract backgrounds. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Do you want to sit, sit next to him? I might screw a pipe into it and it comes up and has a little tea thing. And then I might just put the tea out there and then that's enough. And then you just put clay on there. You can if you want to put like tin foil or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could. I'm just trying to think yeah. using up all that wax for a big old head, but if you could just build a... Oh, sure, you, you can do that. The wax is so cheap anyways that I didn't bother. I, I did some, I did, I, I don't know if you saw, maybe you see with the really large one I did of the, of the Indian girl. Oh, and yeah. It's like a history of the world. So it was like started with Ammonites and, yeah. and then lung fish. And, 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 uh, and uh, so yeah, the wax. And then we, yeah, and then I had a cat. Well, that one was bronze. And I still had the wax there, but I since just... Holy smoke! Wow! This is a great grove of oyster mushrooms. Uh. Oyster dinner? mushrooms. Dinner? Edible. Oh, yum yum. These are really great. Fantastic. Yeah, look at that. Those are Hi, just before they get a There's a group of, of uh Can you say can you say beep beep? Beep beep, look out, beep beep. Do you have a license, sir? Do you? This is Good the job. sweetest you little high-end <laughs> baby scooter I've ever seen. Where should we go now? Where should we go now? Huh? He really has Liam's attention. It's a very romantic. Oh my god, I love the fact that you even do candles and you oh, have a fire. Yeah, these are only part of the candles that we have lit. We light candles every night. We just like to. These are the mushrooms that Kwong just picked. And these, oh, I love this little table down here. You guys have just yeah, got it this all going. Chopping block. This came from a hunk of cherry from our backyard. You guys are too cool. Thank you. This cool. is Kwong's Christmas gift to me Aww. in 2017. And this is the base is actually from an old quilting table, an Amish quilting table. Oh, wow. The legs from it. And then this is an old yoke. It's so fun. Everything has a story. I know. Wow. Oh, Liam, yeah. let's see those lips. What is she doing? Hold that plug. What is she doing? Oh. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. It was just so romantic with the candles oh, and the baby. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh, Scott. Oh, very precious. <laughs> so, Adrian and Kong yeah. made this? Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. And she made kimchi. Kimchi and broccoli. Oh this is like. So, Liam, this is like amazing. Your mommy is such a good cook. But so this is wonderfully convenient. You know what? I think I'm gonna sign it in the upper right corner actually. Such a masterpiece. Oh thank you, Scott. I just love the two of you guys.
I love how you banter back and forth and how <laughs> annoyed Sue is with you. I am always annoying Sue with facts. That she does not want to hear. <laughs> I don't think it's the fact thing. It's the uh, it's how <laughs> I think how passionate you are um, uh, against people who don't do the facts. <laughs> <laughs> how annoyed you get with them? I just am more of a scientist.